All right, today you're gonna take Cornell notes on cells. This is chapter seven in your textbook. So make sure you draw your line about an inch from the margin, take the notes on the right side of the line. And then when you're done, you're gonna put your questions on the left and a summary that has a minimum of five sentences at the end. All right, there are two basic types of cells, eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Eukaryotes are cells that contain a true nucleus. So it's a nucleus that's surrounded by a nuclear membrane. And examples of eukaryotic cells are all complex cells, including our cells, plant cells, animals, protists, and fungi. On the right, you can see a picture showing the complex cells that eukaryotes have. Prokaryotes are cells that do not have a true nucleus. So there's nothing surrounding the genetic material and they don't have any membrane-bound organelles. Examples of this would be bacteria cells. They're very simple and they're primitive. The first types of cells on Earth were prokaryotic cells, but they're also the longest surviving cells. Prokaryotes are still found today on Earth, so they have been able to survive um, for generations and generations, for millions of years. In our class, we're going to be focusing on two different types of eukaryotic cells, plant cells or animal cells. Plant cells have one large central vacuole right here. A vacuole is basically a big open space, and it can store water or nutrients, um, but it's generally a big open space within cells. They also have a cell wall. So they have a membrane around the cell, which is this inner line, but then they have a wall that surrounds it to help protect it. It also helps make it more rigid and sturdy because plants don't have a skeleton to help them stand up. Plants also contain an organelle called a chloroplast. Now the chloroplast is where photosynthesis takes place. Now, one thing that people forget or they get confused about, plants also need mitochondria. So they do go through both photosynthesis and cellular respiration. So they have chloroplast as well as mitochondria. Don't forget about the mitochondria. Now, animal cells don't have a cell wall. They just have an outer membrane that surrounds the cell. They do have mitochondria. That's where cellular respiration takes place but they do not have any chloroplast because animals do not photosynthesize. Now, cell structures and functions. Every cell has structures that help them carry out the functions of life. They're called organelles, and they're tiny specialized structures inside of a cell. And cells also have cell membranes both um, prokaryotes and eukaryotes have these membranes. They're the boundary of the cell. They're what we call semi-permeable. Semi means partway, and permeable means something's able to get through it or permeate through the membrane. So the semi-permeable membrane regulates what goes in and out of a cell. It allows certain things to go through, but it protects the cell from other things from entering. So it's going to allow gases like oxygen or carbon dioxide to go through, but it's going to protect the cell from viruses or other things that might want to try and get into the cells. It also holds everything together. So it keeps everything in one spot and it allows homeostasis to take place. Remember back to the beginning of the year, we learned about homeostasis. That's trying to keep everything at the right levels for you to survive. So the right amount of oxygen or the right percentage of oxygen and carbon dioxide, the right um, pH in your blood, things like that. So the cell membrane helps keep homeostasis um, occurring. Another name for a cell membrane that you might hear is, you might hear it called a plasma membrane. That's the same exact thing. And then lastly, um, cell walls. So again, cell walls are found only in plants, not in animals. And they help provide structure and support for the cells. And it lies on the outside of the cell membrane. Now in your notes, what I'd like for you to do is create a Venn diagram where you have prokaryotes in one circle, eukaryotes in another. And down here are a bunch of different phrases. I want you to put them in the correct spot, either in the prokaryote spot, the eukaryote spot, 
or in the middle if prokaryotes and eukaryotes both um, contain or have that characteristic. You're going to create now a second Venn diagram, this one comparing animal cells to plant cells. And you're going to include the words and phrases down here at the bottom as either being in animal cells only, in plant cells only, or something that both animal and plant cells share. Now that you're done with your two Venn diagrams, go ahead and write your five-sentence summary of these notes.